Hi, my name is Miira Spivak, and I am the NCSY Director in Oregon. Um, if any of you have not ever been to Portland, Oregon, um, which is where I live, um, it's an awesome place, and if anyone is ever thinking about being an advisor, uh, then please contact me. We're always looking for new, excited, and motivated alumni or just college-age students who really want to make a difference, so please contact me. Okay, so this week's Torah portion is Parshas Titzaveh, and I'm going to be sharing with you a nice concept, um, which I actually heard from Rabbi Frand uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm going to hopefully be bringing it down to something pretty practical. Uh, so this Parsha, actually, this Torah portion talks a lot about the uh, priestly garments that the priests used to wear when they did the service. Uh, some of it was for the regular priests and some of it was for the high priests. Uh, one of the garments that the high priest actually used to wear was called the choshen, which is a breastplate. And that choshen was made up of 12 different stones. It was four rows with three in each row. And each one had one name of the 12 tribes. So there was 12 tribes, 12 stones. There was something also called the Urim Vatumim, which was basically a writing of God's name. And that was placed into the breastplate. And that paper basically allowed um, to convey messages from God. So how did that work? How did that happen? So basically, whenever the Jewish people were faced with a really critical issue and something that they wanted to know about, they would, let's say if they would go to war or something like that, um, the high priest would go and need advice. And he would come to seek advice. He would, I guess, take this choshen and he would... Um, use the Urim Atumim and ask, basically ask God and say, what should we do? Should we go? Should we not? And somehow, through the letters um, on the breastplate, on the stones, the letters would appear and light up, and those would spell out a message for the priest, and he would then know what message to relate to the Jewish people. Just think about it for a minute, though, how cool that would be is if we had that today, if we had the Choshen today, and we were able to just you know, just go and ask God whatever we want. Like, who are we going to marry? Or like, is that person I know going to be better? Is Iran going to strike? Like, what's going to happen? It would be pretty amazing if we had that. Um, you know, am I going to do well on my test? Uh, unfortunately, the Jews and the Kohen, the priests, didn't actually just whatever they wanted. They didn't use that for whatever they wanted. They obviously only asked really important matters. But it was a pretty cool thing to have. And, you know, definitely something that we are missing out of, missing out on the fact that we don't have a temple today. So the Ramban, who is um, Nachmanides, actually tells us something really fascinating. The word Urim means light, and whenever, again, whenever these, um, the Kohen, the priest, would ask a message, the letters would light up. The funny thing was, though, is they didn't necessarily light up in order. So let's say the priest would say to God, well, God, should we go to war? He might get a message that looks something like this. And I want you to tell me if you could understand what this message is. Now, obviously it would be in Hebrew, but this is just a little explanation, right? He would then have to unscramble the words and realize that if you unscrambled it, it would really look like this, go to war. And then he would know, he would be able to break the code, okay? The, what the Nachmanides is telling us is that actually the Urim was the letters lighting up, but the Turim was really the, this extra ability to understand what the letters were. So it could be that someone would see the letters but not really understand. Again, the Urim was that light to see the letters, but the Tumim was that ability to understand. And there were actually, in fact, times that the Talmud tells us that one that the high priest actually did not understand the messages. And if anyone's familiar with the famous story of Chana, um, who was one of the um, great famous woman in um, in the Tanakh, okay, um, and she didn't have children, and she went to um, pray to God, and the high priest, and she went to pray and asked for children, um, and the high priest saw her, she was praying to herself in the court, like, just whispering and mumbling things to herself, and at that point, no one had ever prayed silently before, and he saw her in the corner, and he was like, well, what what's going on? And he actually turns, you know, to the Urim Batumim, and said, well, what's going on with this lady? And these certain letters popped up. Now, if you're, any of you are familiar with Hebrew, um, these are the letters that popped up, okay? There's a He, there's a Shin, a Chaf, and a Resh. And when he um, 
unscrambled the letters. Unfortunately, these are just random letters that popped up. He actually understood it um, to read this, which means shikora, which literally means she's a shikor, that she's drunk. The reason why she's whispering is because she's drunk. He misunderstood, and really the letters unscrambled to read this, which is kishera, which is like she's kosher which means, no, what she's doing is okay. She's really praying the right way. So at that exact moment, even though Ailey, the high priest, was a very holy man, he kind of lacked the, po the power of Turim at that moment. So there's actually a book written by one of the rabbis in London. Um, it's called The Bait Of, and it mentions that there are actually people, there are a lot of people today who are blessed with the power of Urim, right, the light. Um, that means, they're, they're, that refers to the light of Torah, that they know Torah, they have knowledge of Torah, they can bring proofs. But not everyone today has the power of Tumim, which means they don't really, we don't all really know what God's trying, what message God's trying to tell us. There's only a few people in every generation that really understands these, the power of Tumim. They really know what God wants from us, what the Torah wants from us. A lot of times we look at our own lives and we're just making decisions and we're not sure what to do and we kind of forget this must be the right thing. Um, you know, this is in the name of God, we're going to do this or we're going to make the right decision. We're going to take this job, we're going to live in this location, and, uh, you know, but we're not really sure. It's only rabbis, that some even specific people that really have that extra special knowledge, that power of Tumim, to really help guide us in our lives. So um, I really think a great message that we could take from this is, you know, is that all of us, as much as we can, to try to connect to people that are closer to God um, so that we could get as much guidance as we can in making decisions in our early, in our everyday lives. So again, uh, thank you so much, and please contact me if you're ever in Portland or ever interested in working for Oregon at CSY. Thank you so much.